For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Welcome to another edition of the Focus program. My name is Paul Dingaman. Lots of things coming up in the uh, Marine City, uh, St. Clair, Adair area, and we're going to hear about it on this show. Uh, let's begin with a friend from Adair, the mayor of Adair, Kurt Slota. Nice oh. to see you. Welcome back to the Focus Set, sir. Hey, thanks Always for having me pleasure. back again. I'm actually not the mayor. I want to clarify, well, though. I'm gonna, oh, there, is a, there is a mayor. There is an actual mayor of Adair, and it is not me. Okay. It is my actually my older brother, Eric. Okay. Yep. And he stuffed the ballot box, or what did he do? Uh, no, he just raised the most money last year. Uh, last year was a unique year. Um, it was an electric year, so every four years we also do a mayoral race along with the queen race, which was last year, and he was the winner last year. So he raised the most money. You are the owner of the Adair Bar. Correct. And you are here to talk to us about a wonderful event, which is called Sucker Fest. Yes. Let's uh, start with that and uh, welcome everybody. Major Sheets from the hey, Salvation Army nice is to the nice to nice to see you, sir. Is the recipient of much many dollars that has been raised by the Sucker Fest. Let's talk about that. Okay. Well, last year was our largest total ever. We raised last year sixty-five thousand nine hundred two dollars. No. Yeah, no. that was our donation. That's absolutely for staggering. Yes, it was over seventeen thousand more than we had the previous year. So. Um, we really outdid ourselves last year. It was all because of Sarah Gutavis. Um, yeah, she was certainly she was certainly one of the very big contributors. Her also sitting next to Darcy Patterson is another runner again this year, and she raised a whole bunch of money also. So, talk to me about what happens. Well, how did it start? Um, Sucker Fest uh, goes back into uh, around 2002 or 2003. Um, they had the first one. It was originally. Um, to raise some money for the troops over fighting oh, yeah, that's right. uh, over in uh, the Gulf War at that time, or Afghanistan, I guess it was. Um, and they were trying to raise some money for phone cards, gift baskets, stuff like that. So that's kind of how it started. Um, it's all centered around, around sucker fishing, uh, which is a big thing out in the Adair area. Um, you can catch them with poles or dip netting, or um, they had a big fishing contest and had a parade. And, and after that, it just turned into a uh, annual thing and then after a few years we adopted the Salvation Army here as our because uh, we started raising so much money you know we need to have to give it to yeah, somebody so right. um, uh, we decided to go with them uh, they were local and uh, you know we know that a lot you know the good most of the money that we give them goes to a good place and the people in this area so we'll get to the major in a minute but for those that might not know what is a sucker what is a sucker a sucker is a big uh, fish uh, it's a bottom dweller um, Kind of like a carp or a catfish kind okay. of Okay, catfish um, kind, yeah, of yeah. Family kind of thing. Yeah, so oh, it's yeah. ugly. It's ugly. I mean, like a fish <laughs> got big lips on it. That's why they call them suckers. Um, and uh, they're not really very good eating either. And they're not good eating either? Not really. You can smoke them and they're not too bad, but. Uh, uh, but yeah, people smoke them with a cigarette or. <laughs> no, you gotta smoke them like in a smoker. That's right. how people eat them most of the time, okay. smoked. So the Salvation Army, like many good groups, always is in need of money. And this obviously is a, a nice shot in the arm after uh, your kettle drive at the winter. Yeah, they, the uh, money that Sucker Fest raises helps so many people. We're able to, to put that money to good use and uh, give it to people in need. What, talk to me now what's happening in St. Clair County. Are we still uh, having more and more people that, that need services, or are you seeing less people? I think it's pretty consistent right now. It, it, uh, I don't know that we're on the rise or on a decline. It's, it's pretty stable year to year, uh, about the same number each year. And uh, this helps part of your budget. You have a big budget, but uh, some of that uh, comes from the Christmas time with the kettles. Right. And, and this right. supplements it. This, this helps a lot. We give out hundreds of thousands of dollars in social service assistance, helping people stay in their homes, uh, rent and utility assistance, or food pantry, and uh, things like that. Um, so how, how else can people help you besides writing a check? During Christmas, ringing bells is a big, uh, big thing. If we could get volunteers to ring bells, it uh, brings in, able to raise more money, and uh, it's a crucial to get more volunteers. Great, great. <coughs> All right, well, well, we'll get back to the major in a minute, but why don't you come down and talk to me about uh, the, la the ladies here and what's going on. What is the Queen Contest? The Queen Contest. So every year, uh, you know, our main fundraiser, how we raise money, is that uh, there's a contest between people that want to be the next Sucker Fest Queen. Um, essentially, they can come up with any type of event or idea they can use to raise money, to generate dollars, 
Um, sometimes we give away cash prizes, sometimes we just give away door prizes or gift certificates. You know, they ask for donations from local businesses and other things like that. And they try to come up with ways to generate money. Um, horseshoe tournaments, pool tournaments, oh, okay. different okay. things like that where people pay an entry fee. And they come, they have a good time, they spend some money, you know, they might, you know, participate in this, that, or the other thing, or buy this, or buy that. Um, you know, just raise money for the Salvation Army, and all that money goes right directly to the Salvation Army. Um, we don't use it for anything but that, so. So, Sarah, you were the queen last year. Yes, I was. And how many years did you run to become a queen? Two. Two years? And how much money did you raise? Fifteen, over $15,000. $15,000, that's just amazing. <laughs> uh, what kinds of things did you do to raise that money? I had a wine tasting, I did a euchre tournament. Um, just community all helped. I got donations from Neiman's and Adair and Voyager. And You're at the, awesome. You work at the Voyager? Yes, I do. At the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. And you have lots of people know you there and smile at you, and, yeah. and you're not afraid to say, hey, I need some money. Nope, give me a dollar. Give me five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would you recommend? Would you recommend other young ladies uh, to run for the, the... It helps out a good cause. Yeah, everybody helps out. So, okay. Yeah. Now, you were queen, and you were queen for 2016 to 2017. Correct. Can you run again? I could have. Mm -mm. No, cannot run again. Cannot Once run you've again. been the queen, the you may no, no longer ever be the no queen again. Oh, so why, no. It's a one-time one shot. Once you're the queen, that's we, it. We you, broke news today. We broke yeah. news. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. The queen didn't even know. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Darcy, you ran yes. before. Yes, last year. And you, and this guess, gal yeah. here, she raised more Stayed money than you did. How yeah. much money did you raise? Eleven thousand. $11,000 and you didn't win. No. Oh, my God. Still a good cause though, yeah. and I had fun. How That's did you raise part. your money? Um, I had um, a lot of pool tournaments. I have them every weekend, and now I'm having them twice a week this year. Oh Try my God. Maybe this way I won't lose. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> um, now I have a lot of pool tournaments. I have, like this Sunday, I have a euchre tournament. Um, I do um, horseshoe tournament. I already had one. I actually got lucky on that one nice day of weather we had this year already. Yeah. And, mm. um, Meat bingos. I have a lot of meat bingos and things like that. Do you hold them right at, at the their bar? Or um, I place? also work at Bell River Bar. Okay. And I ho my pool tournaments are there. It accommodates. We have a lot more pool tables and mm -hmm. things. And um, there's a lot of pool players there. I do have some of my events, like the horseshoes, I do at Adair. You know, I kind of fluctuate both. I, and it's another reason I'm doing it is I like to bring the people into these two local bars yeah. that really help raise a lot of money for this yeah. cause and it kind of benefits everybody all around we're raising money for charity we're bringing more money into our businesses and getting the community all involved that's wonderful together. how many years yeah. have you been involved in the queen contest this is my second year running second for queen year. but i have like helped other queens in that in the previous years and with events and stuff like that you should have a queen's club or something <laughs> <laughs> we do it's secret it's yeah. a secret club. <laughs> you have secret meetings. <laughs> and Ashley, uh, talk to me about how they got you involved. Actually, I tried nominating my mom. Okay. And it backfired. She threw, right. <laughs> she threw me in. Right. Have you have you you haven't done it before? Nope. This is my first year. And what are you doing to raise money? Um, I have a horseshoe tournament coming up on the fifteenth. I am also going to try an auction. Okay. What are you going to auction off? A little bit of everything. I've got people donating baskets. I've got people donating furniture items. Just kind of a mix. Okay. So it's it's a fun thing for you guys. Yeah, and, it and, and and giving back is, is something nice to do. It is. Okay. It's great to see uh, young people involved. It is. And uh, it certainly has got to be a unique kind of a fundraiser for the Salvation Army. <laughs> that's, that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> but a great, uh, great deal, though. Uh, talk to me about the parade and, and what ha what's when is the the Sucker Fest date? We forgot. Okay, to throw that uh, so Sucker Fest this year is Sunday, May seventh. Um, the parade starts at noon that day. Um, you can start lining up for the parade as early as ten thirty in the morning. That's when we start taking registration and all that. Or you can register prior to at the Ader Bar. Um, you can also turn in registration so that way when you show up, we have you in your list. You don't have to do anything. You just get in the parade line. Um, but it's a great big parade. We usually have a hundred or so floats in it. Oh my God! Um, and it's a long parade route. It's a seven-mile route through oh the my country God. roads. Um, so 
<laughs> it's a good time. It's a good ride, though. I mean, if you're going on the parade ride, it's, it's an hour ride. So Where do um, you go? Uh, we go down um, Hessen Road and up the Putty Gut um, and back through the dirt roads, just pretty much all through Casco and the Eight Air area marvelous. right there. Um, That's marvelous. And we loop back around and then come back into town um, when it's all said and done. And the, the police helps us out, the sheriff's department, and they, uh, you know, they help us stop traffic and yep. help us close the roads and all that type of stuff, and uh, you know, make sure that nobody's causing any problems, which never happens there. So that's right. <laughs> and uh, do you have a new ship this year? Or do we have a new float this new year? Float? Uh, no. Um, last year, my dad finished a float that he had done previous and didn't finish it. So he ran it in the, in the parade one year, half finished. And so we finished it last year. And uh, this year, it doesn't sound like he has anything that he's planning on making this year. So, okay. so uh, has, has he always put something new in every year? He doesn't always every year. He's been close to every year. But every as he's gotten a little bit older, he seems to like <laughs> be every other year now. You know? Okay. Every third year. It takes year. a lot out Every of third year. Every, every fourth. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, it might begin it to be every third year. stretches out a little year. bit. Right. He's got another project he's working on. so. Uh, it takes up a lot of his time. Okay. Any final thoughts on, on how to raise money, uh, uh, Darcy? For me? Uh, Eric, for you, do you want to encourage people to give I you do. money? I do. I want to encourage people to come and check out the events. You get to meet new people you might not have never met before and to see the how heartfelt it is of everybody attending. Like I have a lot of repetitive people that consistently come to every one of my pool tournaments, That's my wonderful. events, and I love it when I see new faces and that, yeah. and it's just a great feeling. And I really do encourage people to try to make it. We advertise them a lot through Facebook and flyers. And just come out to Adair and check it out. We have listings of all events. You can call and ask when there's something if you want to come to it. Sounds and like fun. We have pictures there are, for sale. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot. Pictures? To, yeah, pictures for samples. Yeah. What kind of pictures? Like Still? Bud Light, Bud oh, Light oh, pictures. And yeah, those kind of things. Yeah. 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 Um, and one of the things is there is an Adair Sucker Fest Facebook page. Oh, so yeah. that has a list of all events for all the different queens and everything up through up until Sucker Fest. So okay. that'll give you a list of anything. So What was that final number last year? The final number was 65,902 and our grand total over the 14 year grand total 374,229. 374,229. Just amazing. It is. Just amazing how God gives you money, right? He blesses again and again. Major, always a All pleasure. Right. Paul, your good blessing. You. Kurt, Paul, oh. good seeing you. Thanks for having us back. Good luck to you. Thank you. I'll I passed see you. the crown on the uh -huh. I passed the crown. The oh, you passed? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's I right. forget to tell you that. <laughs> yep. Fun time. Fun time. Is, is it a special time? Yeah. At midnight, we crown the new one. Right oh, the OK. OK. Yes, at, uh, so the Saturday the 6th yeah. crowning is at midnight at the Theater Bar. So anybody who's interested to see who wins the queen, Come, come on, on down. Come on have down. a few come drinks. On. We have a band and uh, have a big party that night and, and celebrate all their hard work and uh, you know everything they did. And great food. <laughs> great food. Okay. Always great food, neither. Well, that's your invitation to get out to beautiful downtown Adair. He's not the mayor, but he's the assistant mayor, Kurt uh, Slota. That's the man's name for the owner of the Adair Bar. And, and what a great fundraiser it is for the Salvation Army. We salute them for that for that effort. Three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars over all the years that they've been doing that. If you haven't been there, get out there. It's, it's a lot of fun. Coming up next, uh, Jason Steyer and uh, Dave Fry talking about the box uh, project uh, from the St. Clair Art Association. We'll be right back. Uh, last week in the Times Herald, there was a story about a young lady by the name of uh, Taylor Dishaw, right? Yes. And we happen to have her come into the studio along with uh, one of her former teachers, uh, Jason Steyer, and from Riverview East High School. And let's uh, meet Taylor. Welcome to the Focus Set. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. You were uh, uh, on an assignment from uh, Riverview East yes. to uh, produce a mural for a wonderful uh, organization yeah. called this Michigan Dyslexia Organization. Tell me about it. Uh, it's a mural that basically shows what it's like to be different and to learn differently because not everyone can do the same thing and that's kind of what dyslexia is like is you get everything mixed up and it's all jumbled around and not everyone learns the same. What gave you the inspiration for the uh, mural that you did? I actually didn't pick this out. It was offered to me 
as is, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity, and I loved the quote, and I loved the picture and what it stood for. Okay, if uh, Jer oh, Jared's got it up. Uh, the quote is great. Everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish on its ability to uh, climb a tree, uh, my eyes are going. It will live uh, its whole life being uh, believing it's stupid. And that was from Albert Einstein. Yes. Great, great statement. Great, wonderful statement. Mm -hmm. What an interesting guy he was. Uh, so you painted this, and did you put the, the tree there and the owl in it too? Yes, Is that I your did, concept? I did the whole thing. The tree and the owl were already in the picture given to me. It was already put together. How long did it take you to do that mural? Um, spread out over a couple of weeks, but in total probably about a week with a few hours in a day. Okay. Do you like that kind of work? I do. I like to do murals and I like doing things for different organizations and stuff like that. I've painted for Marine City Middle School and I like helping out. You uh, recently graduated from uh, Riverview East High School. Yes, March Mr. 3rd. Mr. Steyer here was one of your teachers? Yep. Talk to me about him. <laughs> he's great he's really inspired me through the rest of high school I started there at the beginning of my junior year and I probably a wonderful place isn't it yes it is it's, the it's like a little school. family mm -hmm. and I probably wouldn't have been where I am without him it's he's really opened a lot of new doors and a lot of new opportunities for me that I couldn't have done on my own and it's taught me how to do things on my own further from then uh, do you encourage other people to go to Riverview East? I do. I Even some of my friends who are struggling in regular schools, I let them know like this is a school that can help you and open new doors for you. Great. Well, we, uh, we thought you should come in and, uh, and talk to us about this uh, wonderful project that you did for Michigan Dyslexia Institute, and we salute you for that. You're, you're, Thank you. What, what are your plans next? Um, I start college next winter Wonderful. at uh, SC4, and after my associate's degree, I plan to go to Saginaw Valley State and work towards my master. I'll be majoring in art and working my way towards an art, to being an art educator. Wonderful. Congratulations. We Thank salute you. you. Nice guy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn to this uh, aforementioned uh, teacher, Mr. Uh, uh, Jason Steyer, and you brought along a bodyguard, uh, Dave Fry. I always Fry. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to see you both. <laughs> you guys have a project going uh, from the St. Clair Art Association called The Boxes. The Block Project. The Block. Yeah. Pro oh, yeah. No, no, and, and talk to me about it. So uh, The Block Project is our uh, probably the most ambitious public art project to date. Um, and it, it kind of relates to the quote that, that Tay painted on the wall. Um, and the fact that, you know, we recognize, uh, not just in the classroom, but in our community, that everyone has different abilities and different skills and, and things that they can bring to the table uh, when given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to take the indiv individual blocks of our city and bring them together. Okay. Uh, so we're actually uh, challenging residents to uh, branch out, get out there, meet their neighbors, find out what they're interested in, what they're capable of doing, uh, and come together and create a block of their own as part of our, our overall citywide public art project. We've got one of the boxes up here, and this is in front of the Art Association in the mall. That was up there a few, a few weeks ago. How big is that box? Uh, so the blocks are four foot by four foot uh, wooden cubes. Okay. Uh, this one was actually designed by the students at Riverview East. Okay. Uh, so it kind of serves as an example of, you know, the potential of what you can do with a simple block. Uh, we felt that a block was something that uh, wasn't intimidating to people. You know, we all grow up, we use building blocks, and that's right. kind of the, one of the first things we do to create. Uh, so the Art Association is providing uh, the plain wooden blocks to the community, uh, and we'll see just how far they can take them. Okay. You're, you're working over down at Riverview East there on those bo boxes. Right. Blocks. And there, there really are no limitations to this. We hope that people take this blank canvas and, and branch out. You know, as you see on this one, things can uh, protrude from it. Uh, it can be interactive. Uh, the previous one had a door, and there's a world on the inside of the, the block. Uh, so we're really curious to see what people can do with, with just a simple, ordinary block. Mr. Fry, yeah. this is your creation. What do you, let's go back to the previous well, slide and tell us what you got there. Well, my concept was interaction with the box. And um, 
granddaughter approved interaction. So <laughs> it's sort of like an activity um, block. Okay. And um, on this particular side, each side will have a different theme. This side is vibration. And basically, on any of these, which it, this area is a bungee cord, um, windshield wipers, repurposing things. Um, and using the inside of your finger, I'll, these, this is just the first phase of probably a three-phase okay. um, activity. Let's, let's see the next slide. Okay, so that's and, your bungee cord. Yeah, and so I can uh, touch those and it vibrate, of course. Yes, okay. and it sounds like a, a bass oh, okay. or whatever string instrument you want it to. Okay. And they're all adjustable, so um, someone can move the blocks or the square and change the tune. Okay. So there's some thought process going in with the uh, interaction of it. And then there's going to be one side where you will touch things that, you know, two and three year olds are not supposed to touch. <laughs> um, and pull and just things that they can touch. And then another one will be sound. Um, At this the yeah, That's one side will be a drum where you hit different areas of the, the square. And one thing that I found interesting was if you hit the drum, which is made out of an old tire and uh, packaging tape, if you put your hand on the back side, you can feel the sound vibration coming out at you. No matter how slight you hit that, you know, a very soft noise, you can still feel that vibration, which to me, it's interesting. I hope kids find it interesting. <laughs> so, Jason, that's the concept. You can really do anything. You can, yeah. absolutely. And you're hoping to have multiple blocks made yes. on multiple city blocks. Yeah, so currently we have about two dozen blocks that have been reserved oh, wonderful. from uh, schools and individuals and civic organizations. Um, so we're in the process of building the blocks and uh, preparing to deliver them to whatever site they want to use. Oh, so I don't have to build my own block. You don't, you can, by okay. all means you can, if you're willing and able, uh, but we are working on uh, funding and building the blocks uh, so that people have that, that starting point. Okay. Uh, then when you get the 12 or 13 or 100 done, right. uh, what's going to happen? Uh, this fall, we're going to host a, a citywide block party. So okay. we're going to get everybody together to see all the finished products and kind of celebrate what we've accomplished together as a community. Uh, and then uh, the hopes is that we'll display them in one central location until we get till next year, um, and then we're going to take all the blocks together as one uh, exhibit to Art Prize wow. in Grand Rapids. That's a big so, one. Yeah, absolutely. That's really big. So we want to share what, what we're capable of doing here in our community with the world, and that's a great venue where they get people from all over the country and around the world. It's not necessarily a competition. If I want to do something on a boat, somebody else can do something on a boat. I absolutely. Mean, it's not Individual. It's not about competition. It's about uniting people, bringing people together, and strengthening our community through art. Okay. All right. There was thoughts of making it a contest and giving out a prize, but that isn't what this is about. It's about creating, coming together, working together, and making something interesting, hopefully, that you know people can look at and ponder over if they choose to, and just more of a community activity. St. Clair Art Association Block Project, Jay Steyer at ecsd.us. That's where people need additional information. Yep. You got a Facebook page too? Yeah, say? we do have a Facebook page. It's SCAA Block Project. And there's also a, a Facebook page for the St. Clair Art Association. All the information is shared out there. Uh, we'll be hosting a design session in the oh. near future. So if people have questions or need materials or just uh, uh, need to know, you know, how to bring their ideas to life. Uh, we'll be there to answer those questions. For how you. unique is this? Uh, is this is is this the only place in the world that's ever been done? Uh, I believe so. I mean, there have been similar projects where people are given uh, an object and they're told to to decorate it. But the idea that this is uh, the the blocks of a city and that we're bringing people together through this this common object, um, I think, is very unique and original, and it has potential to grow far beyond yep. our local region. Jason Steyer, always a pleasure. David Fry, keep keep Good watching meeting. over this guy, yes. you know. Yes. Okay. All right. He's got my back. Congratulations yeah. to you too, Thank dear. You, you did so a great much. job and stick with these two guys. So yeah. we'll we'll all learn a lot from these two guys. Thank you.
Uh, coming up next is uh, a representative from St. Paul's Episcopal. They've got a big event coming up. We're going to hear all about it in just a second. We are back, and we're back with uh, two fine ladies from St. Paul's Episcopal, Jackie Rands. Nice to see you. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. And Mary Mason, nice to meet you on the air. Uh, we've heard great things about the thrift shop and a new event. And you're the, the push, the, the uh, yeah, we'll call it the pusher behind the new event. Why, what's the thank new, you. What's the new event? We are going to open, have an open house and vendor show on April 1st of this okay. year. And uh, what is a vendor show? There are going to be several companies that um, are selling their products. For example, Avon will be there, an oh, Avon okay. representative. A uh, representative from Mud's, uh, Red Mud Studios will have She's their... She's got some great stuff. Oh, beautiful work. And Jingles Jewelry and Essential Body Wear. And the list goes on. Uh... And this has never been done before at St. Paul's. Uh, this Wait. is my first year doing this, so. Yeah, this is our first time with the thrift shop. And it's a project of the thrift shop. Yes, it is. Good. And we will have the thrift shop open so everybody can come up and look around and hopefully find things they can't live without. I like that idea. That is so good. In case I've just moved to the area, mm -hmm. what is the St. Paul, St. Uh, Paul's Episcopal Thrift Shop. Um, we're a bunch of women, men, a few men, that work for the community. We, um, everything we do, the money goes back into the community. Okay. And we've just been so busy with our new helpers. Kathy Ingalls and Mary the world, are world famous Kathy Ingalls? The world famous. She called me about you two coming, but she was sitting on a beach somewhere. I know. I so it was 80 degrees, too. so I immediately hung up. <laughs> no, didn't I, did, I didn't do that. that. I didn't do that. Uh, no, talk to me about what, what kinds of stuff you have at the thrift shop. We have men's clothing, women's clothing. We have uh, clothing for uh, the missus the mister, the junior. Uh, we don't carry any children's clothes or baby things. Do you have winter, summer, spring, and fall? Right now we do. Okay. And when are you open? We're open on Tuesdays from 11 to 3 and Tuesday night from 6 to 8. We're open then on um, Wednesday. Wednesday from 11 to 3. And we're open on Saturday from 11 to Oh, you're going to open a lot of hours, a lot of hours. Uh, as many as we can get help for. If I am cleaning out a closet, are you interested in seeing that kind of merchandise? Very, very much so, yes. And how would I, is there a number I should call before I bring it over? Or? Um, the number, isn't that terrible, I don't remember. The number's in the phone book that's <coughs> under the thrift shop. Oh, the old phone book. I have it on my. That's right. We'll, okay. we'll look. They can look it up. But and it's through St. Paul's Episcopal, so they can call yes. the office there at yes. the right time. The thrift shop is upstairs. Correct. In the in the, the school building or in the building, and uh, the church building. Uh, where is the, the event going to be held? It'll be in the uh, parish hall, which mm -hmm. is downstairs. If you enter, that would be the north. The north end. end. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll off go of through Thorn those, Apple. yeah, off of Thorn Apple mm -hmm. and off of um, Six, mm -hmm. and you'll walk into the parish hall, and that's where the, our vendors will be set up, and you can go. Please um, see the merchandise that's available, and then run upstairs, and we have our thrift store, like I said, would be open, and we have our wares to be sold also, <laughs> and we have everything from. Uh, housewares, pots, pans, and like Jackie said, clothing, bedding. Yep. It all depends on what comes in that way. We take okay. donations. Yep. Any donations accepted. We can't take big items. We don't have room. We've had uh, people bring in small tables, you know, like an end table. Mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. We can do that. We do but coffee you take pots. Couches. And we cannot, no, or TVs. Or dining room tables or stuff no. like that. Uh, 
Is there an admission to the event? No, no. it's absolutely oh, it's free. free. Okay. All right. And we're going to have little foo-foos there for refreshments. Refreshments. Okay. I haven't seen a little foo-foo in a long time. So <laughs> a little foo-foo you don't I'll, like, I'll, no. I'll, I'll get over there. Okay. See the little foo-foo. That'd be wonderful. Jackie, you've been doing this for a long time, and, and the community and the church thanks you so much for, for your efforts to keep that thrift shop just tip-top. Thank you. And uh, it takes a lot of takes tender a lot love and care. Of tender love and care, and I have fantastic workers. Uh, and you always have nice merchandise. Yes. And you don't, uh, you don't have a lot of and, we and the prices are great. Yes, they are, and we always have in our hall a bag for a dollar. Our merchandise is pulled according to the date, and when that stuff goes out there, we sell it for a dollar a bag. Amazing. Anything you can get in a bag is yours, and we sell an absolute ton of bags. Give us the event date again. It'll be Saturday, April 1st, okay. from noon to 4. Noon to 4 at St. Paul's Episcopal on 6th Street. Yes. And enter off the Thornapple uh, side of the, of the building. And, yep. and you can park in the front, but uh, to come in, follow the sidewalks around to yep. the side. Okay, very good. Very nice to finally nice met to you. Nice to meet you. And uh, nice after you were, you, again. you were introduced to me via Kathy Ingalls on the beach, I'm going to have to have a discussion with her. You better have a discussion <laughs> that she didn't bring you along. To exactly. The beach, that part. Uh, that's about it for uh, this edition of the uh, Focus Program. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in. Till next time, Paul Dingman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.